hang on. Before you start binge tailoring all of your clothes, let's uh, let's prevent you from developing any bad habits. I'm SD, and if you're new and you're really tired of wearing clothes that don't fit you very well anymore, you're in for a treat. The first one being that I really don't like long intros. Let's get into this. Not, uh, not washing your clothes before you tailor them. And sure, we can get into the details of how they're gonna shrink the first time you wash them, so if you buy it, you tailor it, and it's gonna shrink, yada, yada, yada. No, that's, uh, that's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is the fact that I worked in retail, and trust me, bro, your clothes are so disgustingly filthy. Or there's the fact that I love clearance clothes, I love shopping for clearance clothes, but they've been there forever, they were probably bought already, they were returned, that person didn't wash them, they wore them, it's all nasty. Wash your clearance clothes especially. Without giving away too many details of where this was, I remember one time somebody brought a pair of summer shorts and they were like holding them up in the air. They were like, hey guys, check out these shorts. If you see things like this, please do not accept the return. Yeah, that's right. This guy bought a pair of shorts, I'm assuming in like, let's say late spring. He wore them all spring and all summer and then he returned them. Oh, uh. They had like creases in the thighs. It was so nasty. But somebody let him return them and then they just put some tags on them and uh, they went and hung them back up so that somebody else could buy them. Oh, I can't even. You know what's a really bad habit that's easy to develop is watching your needle as you're tailoring your garment. It makes sense. There's a lot of action and a lot of commotion going on right there. So it just kind of naturally draws your eye to it, but no. Do not watch your needle when you're doing this. That's the last place that you wanna be watching and the reason for that is because you're gonna be making little micro adjustments with your hands and you might not notice it. And they might not be a huge deal individually but they can definitely add up. And that even goes with tapering because you might be thinking to yourself, well, if I'm tapering something, I want to be watching the needle because, well, I gotta pay attention to where that pin is so I can pull it out in time, right? Yeah, you're right, you do, but you should try visualizing that line that the needle and the pin are making and be mindful of that. But the bigger issue with staring at the needle as you're doing this is when you're shortening a t-shirt or if you're hemming a pair of jeans, that's when it's a bigger deal because you're not gonna notice those micro adjustments that you're making with your hands and you're gonna have this big old unprofessional looking zigzag wavy of a stitch and it's just gonna look stupid. I've done tutorials on both of those, shameless plug. You wanna keep an eye on those little lines that you see on that metal plate on your sewing machine. That's your seam guide. Think about it, as long as you got two parallel lines, one is the line on your seam guide and one is, well, the edge of your garment, as long as these two stay parallel like that, you're gonna have a straight stitch. I had to think about which one was parallel and which one was perpendicular because we've been doing a lot of fourth grade math and let me tell you, I'm struggling with that. Not getting enough practice and it's so easy to just wanna like dive in because you're really excited about learning how to tailor but you don't do that. You can't do that. I had that problem. You only have so many clothes in your house that you wanna tailor or so many clothes in general. So after you're done practicing on the stuff that you have, what then? What if you're still not that confident and you want to attack some more important, bigger projects? Well, luckily for you, I made a tutorial on how you can just use a bed sheet to practice on. I'd also like to point out the fact that when I was making that video, I shot some B-roll in the Walmart parking lot of me walking into the store, and this old lady, who wasn't paying attention to what she was doing, literally almost hit me with her car. I had to cut off the very end of it, because you see me walking, see me walking, and all of a sudden, oh, <laughs> you were gonna get about 196 strips of fabric out of that bed sheet, so you can practice the straight stitch, you can practice the zigzag stitch, you can practice measuring, pinning, tapering, sewing straight, all of that stuff. And the really cool thing about that is you can use each of those strips over and over and over again. So you could take one strip of fabric and you can practice the straight stitch. You could probably fit, I don't know, let's say seven or eight or even nine straight stitches on one strip of fabric. You literally have about 800 opportunities to practice all of this. Seriously, 800. Let's go learn exactly how to do that. That video's in the end card. I'll see you on the other side. SD out.